okay, yes, I love you and I haven't said hi to you. Let's get it over with, Nismo. Just, just get it over with. Good? Okay. Tonight's episode, what we're gonna be covering is essentially what you need to get started as an audiophile. We're also gonna be reviewing one of my personal favorite amplifiers. It's the Fozy Audio HD A1. As you can see in front of me, it is quite the beefcake. It literally weighs more than a brick, but we'll start over here with what you don't wanna buy. Although these are very convenient, sure they're good for like your car or something if you wanted to it's a little bluetooth receiver these things you could buy for about 10 bucks on amazon they'll get the job done but if you want to be a hi-fi enthusiast or really kind of get into the realm of being quote unquote an audiophile you can just avoid these like they're the plague because they're gonna deliver like maybe 10 bits worth of signal it's just not what you're gonna want to look for what you really want to look for is the smsl m100 so this is a cheap deck that's under 100 bucks. It supports 32 bits as, as well as multiple other bit rates. It can do a whole bunch, just look it up. It's the SMSL M100 again. It has two USB inputs on the back. One of them is actually power, the other is an input. It also has a digital input as well, two RCAs and a coax out. Um, so this thing, again, is kind of what you really want to get started if you're going to stream music or just go from your TV or Xbox or PS4 or you know whatever you have into a power amplifier or a stereo receiver, whatever it may be. You wanna definitely get yourself a DAC. It just kinda gives you the benefit of having your signal proper and just making sure that you have a clean signal from the start. If you didn't wanna go with digital listening, like you wanted to instead use a CD player or use a record player that has a phono preamp you can feed it into one of these which is a tube buffer it's by fx audio this is the tube 01 and i actually have in mine a set of ge tubes they're new old stock 54 56s i believe uh 56 54s i'm sorry they're jans um, as opposed to actually buying a tube amplifier like these are two power tubes out of a console amplifier these are six BQ-5s. Um, these are gonna give you a screaming three watts of power at most. <laughs> so uh, again, tubes have their own benefits and their own sound to them. So we really won't get into that too much, but that's another route you could go down as opposed to what we're gonna talk about tonight, which is more of the solid state realm. This is a class AB amplifier, again, by Fozy Audio or Fozzy Audio, however you wanna pronounce it. It's the HDA1. This guy is super compact and very powerful. It actually weighs quite a lot. I had Chaz hold this and even he was shocked by how much this thing weighs. I mean, like I could just, I could drop it on this table, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, to give you an idea of just how um, beefy and strong and just very well built this amplifier is. It has massive binding posts on the back as well as very nice set of RCA inputs and a three prong power cord that actually uses an earth ground. Another benefit of this, they actually use the earth ground. That just helps give you a low noise floor and get rid of any uh, ground loops you may get or any distortion or interference that can occur from not having an earth ground. We'll actually open up the amplifier real quick to give you a, a little glimpse inside. Here you can see we got a massive toroidal transformer, especially for you know just 50 watts per channel. This thing is very much overkill, um, which is fantastic. It's the reason why this amplifier can support down to two ohms across its terminal impedance. And what that means is you can't put a two ohm load on each channel, unfortunately not. That would be a one ohm load terminal impedance. You can actually give it though four ohm speakers. So a lot of those four ohm speakers that typically people say, oh, you need a high current amplifier to drive that, this thing will do it for you. Um, it has very, very nice components. I'll kind of go over what components they used. It has a Japanese Omron or Omron relay. Um, so that's gonna protect your circuit from any kind of faults or any kind of current overload or just really any kind of bad thing that can happen to your amplifier. You wanna make sure that your safety relay is the best it can be. You wanna make sure that it always works all the time so no major failures can occur. It uses Nova Gold Audio RJ32 uh, audio grade capacitors, which is really nice to have as well. It just kind of gives it a very nice, sweet sound. Um, now this is my favorite part. It uses Toshiba 2SA 1943. I actually had to write it down because there's a lot to this little guy. 
um, and a 2SC5200 set of transistors in a high current Darlington arrangement. And what a Darlington pair is, it's the push-pull style amplifier, so each channel is actually its own push-pull circuit. Um, and what that does is actually gives it a very warm sound. Um, they actually, I believe they advertise this as like a tube sound in a solid state amplifier. And I would, I would agree with that. I mean, tubes will sound different in their own terms, um, but this does have a very warm sound and you guys will get to hear it as well. As a Japanese Alps pot or potentiometer, I always just call it a pot. Um, copper toroidal, a core non-breaking point, oxygen free copper toroidal. And also again, massive gold plated banana plug or binding posts on the back that will support banana plugs um, and gold plated RCA connectors. As well as you can see inside here, they use very thick cable for the transformer leads, which again is just another reassurance that this thing can handle um, pretty high current for what it is. And all the capacitors on the board and everything just look very well uh, placed. None of them are crooked or, you know, it doesn't look like someone threw this together. It looks like someone really took their time to assemble this amplifier and it really shows. I mean, once you guys hear this thing, you will agree. Um, we're definitely using one of the, the higher end microphones so you guys can really give us or we can really give you a good idea of how this amplifier sounds. We're also going to kind of just touch base on how you can also help this amplifier sound better or at least give it a solid connection. This is more of a subjective realm of audio. <laughs> we're going to get into cables a little bit. These are media bridge style cables. This is about as far as I will go to pay for any kind of quote unquote audio cable. Um, Media Bridge just makes really nice cables that have good construction. They don't break your bank. You know, they're not $600 for a three foot, you know, rung. It's just, some of those audio companies go a little ridiculous with the, uh, their signal cables and power cables and speaker wire and all that. Um, but again, Media Bridge is another great company to get yourself into hi-fi audio, to get yourself some nice banana plugs. Um, this is actually Monster Series wire as well. I got this stuff for free. Honestly, any shielded wire will work well. Just make sure it's shielded. If not, you are essentially making giant antennas that go to your speakers um, and you don't want that. Don't buy cheap banana plugs. So these are a set of really cheap banana plugs that I got from Amazon when I first got into the hobby and they have just tarnished really bad. Um, they're super oxidized. They I've only honestly had these not even a couple of years where I've had my media bridge cables just as long, if not just a little bit shorter of a life because eventually I realized how these were going bad and invested in some of these. And ever since then, I've been kind of a media bridge fan. Moving forward, you also can get into, these are kind of silly. Again, we're getting into the more the subjective side of, you know, being a hi-fi enthusiast or an audiophile. You have speaker spikes. The whole idea behind this is you're decoupling the speaker from the floor or the environment to cut down on vibrations and unwanted resonances. They don't really do it, or at least speaker spikes don't. If you really want that, get yourself a foam block or have your friend hold the speaker for you. And if you could physically hear a difference of him holding the speaker as opposed to it on a surface or a stand, all right, then maybe you can invest in it. But they just look nice. They I just... hold the speaker for me, man. <laughs> they just look nice. They, 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 they're. They're just showy. I actually, I, on a lot of my audio equipment, I actually do have these, but I do not expect them to make anything sound any better. I just like how they look. Um, that's the other side of hi-fi audio is the aesthetics. But yeah, let's get to it. We're gonna hook this thing up and let you guys hear it for yourselves. Uh, enough of me talking, let's just get to it. So as you guys have heard, this amplifier is probably one of the best bang for your buck amplifiers you can get for just being a power amp and a class AB. A lot of this stuff nowadays is class D and it, it's kind of, it just doesn't sound like how some of the old stuff sounds where class AB and class A still kind of reigns top dog, in my opinion at least. It just has the better sound to it. You may not get the incredible power or dynamics, I guess, or DSP that Class D can give you, but 
when you have a nice setup, you really don't need it and you really just want to enjoy the sound for what it is. And that's really all I have to say. Thank you again, guys, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>